So I think we can all agree that things right now are kind of crazy. And my hope is that if you're watching this video at some point in the very near future, this intro seems kind of weird and out of place to you. But currently, with the way things are going, every day is uh, a bit of an adventure, we'll call it. Now, I'm trying to stay positive with everything that's going on right now and trying to find the silver linings of our current situation. And I've noticed something. With everyone staying at home, there's a lot of new guitar players. People are picking up guitar either for the first time or they're dusting off that old guitar they've had sitting in the corner or the back of their closet for several years. And this got me thinking about the mistakes that I made as a beginner guitar player when I was first learning. The mistakes I made, the things I wish I could have done differently and would do differently if I could go back and do it all over again. So in today's video, I'm gonna share with you five things I should have learned when I was a beginner guitar player. These are five things that had I learned when I was starting out, I truly believe I would be a better guitar player today. Now, the first thing on the list is something I still struggle with today as a guitar player, and it's a habit that I've found almost impossible to break. It's something that happens to me every time I sit down to play guitar, but it's especially prevalent whenever I'm on stage performing. And that is, don't play so hard. Now, I remember when I was starting out on acoustic, which was my first guitar, like many of you out there, it was so unbelievably hard to play chords. Your initial reaction is to grip the crap out of the fretboard in order to get the notes to ring out properly. Your instincts are telling you to keep the note from buzzing, you have to play harder. You have to grip the neck as hard as you can. And many of us out there do that with some success. You play harder and you get the note to ring out. But I want you to try something. Take your first finger and play G, the six string third fret. And I want you to see how little effort it actually takes to play this note. The reality is it actually doesn't take that much pressure to get a chord to ring out clearly. But so many of us, myself included, never break out of this habit. Even as we get better and we're able to play chords cleanly and even transition between chords nice and easily, we never really move past the point of playing too hard. Now, I still struggle with this today. And in fact, if you look at a lot of the guitars that I play the most, you can tell just by how much fret wear is on them that I have the touch of a blacksmith. And this really isn't ideal. Other than wearing out your frets prematurely, playing too hard can cause things like pulling notes or entire chords out of tune. But if you can lighten your grip up, you'll notice a few things. First of all, it's easier to play. Transitioning between chords is much smoother and faster. If you're playing single note lines, you'll play smoother and more efficiently. The notes will have more sustain and your intonation will be better. You won't be pulling notes and chords out of tune. Now, the second thing on my list has to do with capos or capo if you drive on the wrong side of the road. Now, capos are great tools and I use them all the time. It allows me to use open chord voicings and shapes in different keys that I wouldn't normally be able to without the capo. But as a beginner, it's very tempting to essentially use this as a crutch. Now, this is another thing I was guilty of for way too long, and I understand why. When using a capo, it's really exciting because it seems like it opens up the entire guitar to you. You take a few basic cowboy chords that are easy to learn, like G, D, C, A minor, E minor, and slap the capo on, and now you can play in all 12 keys. And it does work. And there's a lot of songs that are written this way, just capoing on a certain fret and playing open cowboy chords. But so many players get to this point and stop. They don't know that, for instance, right now I'm capoed on the third fret. And if I play a G major shape, this is actually a B flat major chord. And this is a problem because you don't actually know what you're playing. What do you do when you have to transpose a song for the first time to a different key? But don't worry, the solution is actually relatively simple. 
take some time to learn the note names on the fretboard and learn the difference between major chords and minor chords. Now this is pretty simple and it shouldn't take you that much time. And if you can manage to do it, the guitar neck will make a lot more sense to you. You'll know that if I throw a capo on the second fret and play a G chord shape, that's actually a major. This is also where the dreaded bar chords come in. If you learn your bar chord shapes, especially your major chords and minor chords, and combine that with being able to tell the note names up and down the neck, all of a sudden you can play just about any song in any key. Now this isn't always perfect. Some songs will require you to use a capo to play the right chord voicings the way the song was actually recorded. But you wanna know what's actually going on. You wanna understand what chords you're actually playing, not just the shapes that you're used to in open position without a capo. Now the third thing on my list is something that I truly regret not getting into earlier on as a player. And that is learning the basics of music theory. Now, hold on, don't click away from this video just yet and run for the hills. I mean the very basics of music theory. Now, the reality is this can seem intimidating for a lot of players, and it was for me for a really long time, even while I was at music school. Now, as a beginner, don't worry about stuff like this unless you really want to and are into it. This will come whenever you're ready, if you're into that. But there are a few basic things that I would recommend you have some knowledge of as a beginner. The first thing to understand and know are your major scales. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. Reality is the major scale is sort of the foundation upon which the household of musical theory is built. So if you understand what the major scale is, you already have a leg up. The next thing that I would tell you to know is some basic chord theory triads triads are just three note chords like a triangle has three sides a triad like the c major chord has three notes that come from the major scale from there understanding the difference between major triads and minor triads and how to play them in a few different positions on the neck and once you're comfortable with those two things moving on to seventh chords a seventh chord is basically just a triad with an extra note added the seventh note of the major scale. And just by understanding major scales, triads, and seventh chords, you've unlocked a huge world of possibilities on the guitar. Number four, get together and play with other people. Now this might seem intimidating or overwhelming as a beginner, and I know because that's how I felt, and it kept me from doing this for years. I felt embarrassed or shy that I didn't know more on guitar or didn't feel like I was good enough, but the reality is you gain so much when you sit together in a room with other musicians and play with them, especially if they're better than you. I believe music is a communal thing. It's something that is meant to be shared, and it's something that brings people together. Now, I realize that this is oftentimes easier said than done, and you may not be in a position to be able to join a band or even find other people to play with. But there's even other things you can do, like joining online communities and forums or subreddits and talk to people about guitar and music and harmony and theory and learn from one another. I think joining a community of like-minded musicians is one of the greatest things you can do early on to help yourself grow and learn new things about your instrument and help you find your musical voice. Now, the fourth thing on this list for me personally is the thing I really wish I would have done more than anything else as a beginner player, and that is find a teacher. When I first started out as a player, I was completely self-taught. I was learning by ear, listening to records and looking up tabs online, and that was basically the extent of my musical education. And I learned that way for the better part of five or six years. But now looking back, had I taken those first five years, arguably the most formative years in my time as a guitar player and found a great teacher, essentially a mentor, it would have been massive for me. And it's more than just taking guitar lessons and learning scales and chords and riffs and how to play solos. Finding someone who can turn you on to new styles of music that you wouldn't have listened to otherwise. Or having just a structured practice regimen with someone who's holding you accountable each week. Someone who's giving you a direction and holding you 
to that direction each time you visit them. It's like having a trainer. You could just go to the gym and try and figure out how to use the machinery and work out on your own, or you could get a trainer, have someone who's experienced, knowledgeable, knows your goals, knows what you're trying to do, and I guarantee you, you're gonna get to that goal and that point way faster with somebody helping you along the way rather than just doing it yourself. Now, for some players out there, this isn't totally realistic, and I understand that. Teachers cost money, they take a lot of time, but you now have access to one of the greatest teaching resources ever, and that is the internet. Spend a little time online trying to find some practice regimens or schedules that you can stick to each week, and do some research on your favorite players. Some cases, you might be able to find a video course or some kind of teaching material that they've put out online that is way cheaper than going to a teacher each week. Either way, having a teacher or finding a structured practice regimen is huge, especially when you're first starting out on guitar. And finally, learn a little bit about your gear. My first guitar was a Squire Strat. My first few years of playing, I had no idea what any of these controls on the guitar did other than the volume knob. I knew that flipping this switch changed the sound somehow, but I didn't know what it was doing. And also didn't understand why you would have two knobs labeled tone, but three pickups. It just didn't make any sense to me. And I played like that for probably the first year and a half or two years. Now I do have a disclaimer here. The world of gear is vast and deep, and it's very easy to get caught spending more time on forums or YouTube channels learning about gear that you don't have or can't afford rather than actually playing the stuff that you have. We're all guilty of it, myself included. But when I was starting out, I wish I had spent more time learning about how guitars and amps actually worked. If I had done this earlier on, I would have had a much easier time finding my voice on the guitar, and I would have had more fun being able to replicate the sounds of my favorite records and my favorite artists. I was a huge Pink Floyd fan when I was first starting out, and I would listen to guitar parts on songs like Run Like Hell, for example, and have no idea how he was getting that galloping guitar sound. Well, now I know he was using a dotted eighth delay effect, and with the modeling amp I had at the time, using the built-in effects, I could have replicated that sound and been playing along to some of my favorite songs early on, but I had no idea. I also think this is important because when you're first starting out, you're gonna be making purchases and you want to be informed on what you're buying. There's no quicker way to waste money than to buy something you think you need or think you want that you actually don't. So those are five things I wish I knew when I was a beginner guitarist. If you're an experienced player, let me know in the comments down below what you wish you would have known when you were just starting out. Let's help out the newbies out there. Also, I'm really excited to announce that I just launched my first video course available in the description box down below. It's the tone course. It's basically everything you need to understand about the fundamentals of great guitar tone. You can find it linked down below as well as all the other links if you wanna support the channel more directly. Be sure to follow me on Instagram at Rhett Scholl to keep up with what I'm doing each week in my musical endeavors. Be sure to subscribe down below if you haven't done so already and click that bell icon to be notified when I'm going live every Sunday here on the channel and posting new videos. Anyways, hope you enjoyed today's video. I'm Rhett Schull. Thanks for watching and remember there is no plan B.